Good morning, everyone. We have a uh, very, very uh, early session. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who is currently with us and those who will uh, join us uh, online, offline, and uh, will watch the broadcast of the session. Uh, my name is Roman Chukov. I represent uh, the Russian NGO, uh, the organizer of the session, Center for Global IT Cooperation, along with my colleagues. Uh, from uh, several countries, uh, from uh, Kenya, we have uh, His Excellency Barack Otiena, a trustee of the Kenya ICT Action Network and Dot Africa Foundation, who also serves as the general manager of Africa Top Level Domains Organization and Regional Association of Country Code Top Level Domain Registries in Africa. Um, uh, so Barack Otiena is with us uh, online. Uh, greetings, uh, His Excellency Mr. Uh, doc Dr. Uh, Milos Ivanovic uh, from Serbia. Thank you for joining us offline, uh, uh, who is uh, the uh, founder and president of the Open Land Group. Uh, Her Excellency, uh, Ms. Olga Makarova, uh, who uh, represents the Russian private sector, one of the largest IT companies, MTS. Uh, Roberto Zambrano, uh, former MAG member uh, from Bolivia, uh, former uh, ISOC chapter uh, from Bolivia, uh, and many, many other uh, titles. Um, who is also our longtime friend and co-organizer of the session. Uh, friends and colleagues uh, from Russia and from uh, other countries, uh, Mr. Vadim Glushenko, who is uh, the uh, CEO of the Center for Global IT Cooperation. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so yes, I think uh, that we can start. Uh, our today's session uh, is within the uh, broad track of the so-called internet fragmentation. And uh, as of now, uh, we still uh, did not hear uh, a universal approach to this definition. What is uh, fragmentation? How uh, all stakeholders uh, and all regions uh, consider that uh, with regards to the development of uh, ICTs in their uh, regional and country levels? Uh, so we believe that this uh, discussion will uh, make some input. Uh, for this converse ongoing conversation, and uh, this is not our first session on this topic. Uh, we already uh, hosted um, a session uh, about fragmentation called Fragmented Reality. So for those interested, you can watch it uh, in the last year's IGF in Ethiopia. And uh, um, we, uh, while preparing the series of round tables devoted to Russian expert societies' input to the Global Digital Compact, uh, which Center for Global IT Cooperation uh, uh, actually aggregated and submitted. So you can also read it online. Uh, we hosted a series of roundtables where we also touched uh, the base uh, for internet fragmentation. And I believe that uh, some of our speakers uh, will share the main approaches uh, for the, uh, let's say, b basic level of understanding uh, and for very, uh, let's say, broad and comprehensive uh, approach of internet com uh, fragmentation. I would like uh, to ask uh, Her Excellency uh, Ms. Olga Makarova uh, to take the floor and uh, share us uh, uh, your vision uh, about internet fragmentation and what uh, the global community uh, should do about this uh, to kind of be on the same page. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Roman. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for this workshop and let's get started. I will be peeping uh, into my notes to keep things uh, short and uh, to the point. So, uh, we have witnessed how debate around the proposals included in our, in the our common agenda policy brief five, but let's try to look at some issues from a slightly different point of view. Carlotta Perez is a scientist specializing in technology and socioeconomic development. She studies uh, the relationship between technological development and financial uh, bubbles. In 2020, Forbes named Carlotta Perez uh, of five women economists wealthy of our attention. She came to the conclusion that 
every technological revolution follows the same cycle. It all starts with an eruption, followed by frenzy, lots of ideas, lots of money. Then a crash and uh, a turning point. At this stage, uh, at this stage government step in to, to regulate. And uh, then come, comes synergy and maturity. According to Carlotta Perez, we are still living in the era of the fifth technological revolution, the age of information and telecommunications. And we have not reached the turning point yet. So, the question now, what could be the turning point? What will happen after? What should be the institutional recomposition? What might synergy and maturity mean for the internet? Can we influence this process and how? Each technological revolution causes many changes in society. The fifth one gave rise to Web 2 and digital empires. However, the national state system has not passed away since the internet advent. While our virtual lives are in full swing in the digital empire's vastness, our real life still take play, place within the Syrian state borders. So, the questions are, could the growing confrontation between southern states and digital empires be responsible for the turning point start? Do we need a mature internet? And what should it look like? We have not got proper answers to all these questions. But we are confident that we don't want many fragmented splinternets to overrun the mature internet. Internet fragmentation had a myriad of verbal definitions. Sometimes, sometimes emotional, sometimes times sophisticated, but never precise. Some form, of some form of fragmentation can be useful for the entire internet. Google Squeak is uh, a case in point. But no definition can answer one important question. The question is, where is the very red line that crosses the boundary between fragmented and unfragmented internet? The problem is complicated by the fact that fragmentation concepts treat the internet as unfragmented, pre-existing whole. But that's not true. The internet is a structurally, structurally fragmented but interconnected set of autonomous systems. Thus, the following question arises: Can the threat of fragmentation be quantified in figures, and how? As I said, today we see different verbal definition, definitions of internet fragmentation issues, which everyone can read in their own way. So we constantly bump into various forms of Miles Law, which states, where you stand, depends on where you sit. To make a true look at the contribution of the Global Digital Compact from various stakeholders. Perhaps a concise, precise, and unambiguous mathematical model could help. But it has not been created yet. So the question is what needs to be done to reach consensus. It seems that in trying to find the fragmentation formula, we have both good news and bad news. The good news is that we have internet invariance defined by ISOC in uh, uh, 2012. 
It is a great foundation. Any breach of any invariance could be considered, considered a form of fragmentation. But we also have bad news. If internet invariants are always constant, then fragmentation is a variable value depending on various options. Here they are. Fragmentation can be deep structural affecting the entire internet. For example, any attempt to confiscate all IP addresses of one or more state, states would have dramatic consequence for the internet. We will account an example of deep structural fragmentation. We will get a chance to see real split internets without trust, unique identifier, globality, and much more. A similar case almost happened in March 2022 when some officials sent a demand to deprive Russia of all allocated IP addresses. But the technical community made the only correct decision not to do so. And this saved not only Russian users, but also the entire internet. When someone tries to punish someone by stripping them of the internet's core values, the risk punishing the entire internet by stripping it of its core values. But how many people think it's obvious? So, while this case shows that only the existing internet government's ecosystem can protect Russian internet users, I'm afraid we will have to prove it. And probably the only way to do it, to create a, mathematic, a, mathematic, a mathematical model of risk assessment. The entire internet is similarly impacted by sanctions that uh, limit the ability of market participants to make payments for the facilities and services necessary to provide global internet access. The question is how to prove it. Filtering and blocking undesired content and platforms is uh, a political development. All states, without exception, do it. Each sovereign state has its own undesired content blocking policy. The concept of undesired, undesired content is read by each sovereign state in its own way. Some sovereign states may apply similar blocking policies for a certain period of time. If you want to see for yourself, check out blocking website as proxies for policy alignment by Nick Merrill and Steve Weber of the Center of, for Long-Term Cybersecurity at the University, University of California, Berkeley. In March 2022, access to some global platforms was blocked in Russia. Some of internet traffic disappeared and we were sure we would never see it again. Fortunately, we were mistaken. Customers were looking for an alternative. Finally, the Russian customers changed their preferences and started using other platforms. The graphics show, shows the very relocation of Russian customers with their content from one platform to another. What do Metcalf's law and Dunbar's number have to do with this case? Metcalf's law states that the network influence is proportional to the square of the connected user's number. Metcalf's law is constrained by practical limitations such as infrastructures, access to technology and bounded rationality, which can be defined by Dunban 
Dunbar's number. Dunbar's number is a suggested cognitive limit on the number of the people with, we, with whom a person can maintain, state, uh, can maintain stable social relationships. This example allows to suggest that before March 2022, there were several Russian clusters on these platforms connected to each other and uh, to other clusters by Metcalf's law and Dunbar's number. Links uh, to the other custom, uh, to, to the other cluster, clusters uh, have forced Russian users to look for global alternatives. However, the limited number of such links prevented fragmentation of the user experience. The blocking did not have a significant, uh, did not have a significant, significant impact on the content and user experience. The blocking had a significant impact on some platforms in some region. The good news is that some bans may affect individual platforms, but not content. The bad news is we cannot predict how many resources need to be blocked to reach the border of the unfragmented internet and cross the red line. Today, we can only analyze ex post facto, but we need an accurate prediction. Experts suggest four ways to avoid internet fragmentation. The, question are, the questions are, which way is right one and how to reach consensus? Look like we can't do without dull figures. We have a set of technical, political, and commercial developments that may have an impact on fragmentation. Each development can be quantified in terms of its distribution, intentionality, impact, and nature. Each case can be viewed as a function of these variables. The function value can be used to quantify one or more key dimension, dimensions. The question is, why don't try to define a formula for fragmentation? We seem to be in dire need of, of scientists and science centers. Has anyone ever tried to define a formula for fragmentation? The good news is that the answer is yes. A part of this model in front of you. The bad news is that the model was created in 1997. The internet, ha the internet has changed incredibly since then. So, we don't know if we can use this model or not. We need to check, uh, check up. But verbal descriptions are not always convincing. Sometimes they are complex, full of emotion, and virtual versions of Miles Law. Dull figures have a more powerful impact. Let's put aside irrationality. Let's get scientists evolve, involved. Let's get start trying. Thank you. And here are some important references that I used to prepare my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olga. That, that was a very, very interesting and uh, comprehensive analysis. Thank you so much. I hope it will serve as a good basis for uh, not only this discussion, but for many other deliberations on the topic. Uh, because what we value uh, usually in the Russian position is the uh, uh, comprehensive and uh, inclusive approach with all the points. 
and uh, we just witnessed the very, very profound uh, approach uh, to the topic. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, Barack Otiano online. Uh, if, if you can continue, uh, so from the region of Eastern Europe, uh, which is Russia <laughs> belonging to, according to UN classification, even though it's uh, one-eighth <laughs> of the world's surface. Uh, we can move to Africa. And uh, Barak, if you are with us, can you please share yes. the approaches of the technical community from your region? Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me, Mr. Moderator. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. It's uh, 2 a.m. in uh, Nairobi, but uh, the beauty of the internet is that uh, uh, we have a common platform to be able to share in discourse, especially on matters of global importance. Um, I think looking at the subject and uh, taking up from uh, where the uh, previous speaker uh, has left, I would like to. Um, look at this from a perspective of Global South, uh, especially in terms of the issues that we are dealing with insofar as internet development is concerned. Uh, my background uh, is largely in internet infrastructure and internet policy development, uh, both at regional and at policy level. And uh, I'm a believer in the mantra of the Internet Governance Forum of thinking locally and acting globally. I think internet governance is more important if it is relevant at local level, uh, despite the fact that uh, it's a global public good. And uh, what I would like to stress insofar as internet fragmentation is concerned uh, is that um, especially for global South nations or developing South nations, it's important that we take into consideration internet design principles. Uh, the Internet Society has continuously emphasized on uh, the right Internet design principles. As it is, uh, most of the regions in the world, the Global South not limited, uh, are using a system uh, or a solution that was largely designed in uh, the Global North. And I think when I say design, context is very important. Because even when we are looking at designing of buildings, uh, you may find, for example, uh, in parts of the global south, uh, some designs which take into consideration environmental factors as such that uh, people don't live in permanent houses, for lack of a better word. You find nobody communities that build temporary structures that consider the harsh or the hot weather in those particular areas. If I just juxtapose this or compare this to the internet, what uh, should be the recommended design principles that each of the region should consider? I'm saying this because design is key because it inevitably affects um, the structure of the internet and can easily result in fragmentation. We have seen um, the rise of internet shutdowns, especially in global South nations, where probably the design is not robust and there are single points of failure or single points where infrastructure can very easily uh, be controlled or taken advantage of. Again, when we are looking at countries that have been affected by uh, internet shutdowns, and I think the Internet Society and other organizations I have actually done extensive uh, extensive studies on the cost of internet shutdowns uh, on the global internet economy. We also see a scenario uh, in which uh, areas in which we witness a lot of internet shutdowns do not have established internet governance mechanisms. When I say internet governance mechanisms, I'm looking at national fora or opportunities such as this that bring together stakeholders to discuss on equal footing matters that affect internet governance in those particular jurisdictions. When I add to this, it's also important for all stakeholders to pay careful attention to their roles and responsibilities, because this also inevitably affects uh, internet uh, 
or rather affects the issue of internet fragmentation. When I look at, for instance, uh, the technical, let me just look at the, uh, at the stakeholders in a local internet governance ecosystem. Uh, I'll start with private sector. When private sector does not invest in um, the right technological competence, uh, you find that we have half-baked engineers who then build infrastructure that can easily be captured for lack of a better word, or that can easily be compromised. When I say compromised, it can be compromised either locally or it can be by state actors, or it can also be compromised by non-state actors. We have seen uh, situations in which uh, cyber criminals uh, take charge of internet infrastructure that affects uh, various publics or that affects various uh, private sector uh, interests. I would also like to consider, say, the role of government. Government is key because uh, it creates a level playing field for all actors. So you find when governments don't pay attention to internet governance conversations, uh, there's a likelihood that there'll be a wrong impression or feeling that they are under threat, and they are likely to respond wrongly whenever they feel that they are under threat uh, by creating scenarios that result in internet shutdowns. And as I have mentioned earlier, internet shutdowns have a profound effect on local internet economies, leave alone uh, the global internet economy. Uh, let's bring into perspective the role of academia. Academia shapes the skills of the engineers who build the local internet and those who build the global internet. So if academia is not paying attention to internet architecture, to best practices, there's a likelihood that we will end up with wrong architecture that can very easily result in fragmentation. And last but not least, uh, I will talk of, again, two important actors, and I'll look at the media, and I'll look at the technical community. Uh, the media is an important watchman, uh, and the media should continuously point out whenever any of the stakeholders is not in step with what they are supposed to do or whenever any of the step stakeholders is um, misusing the privileged opportunity that they have insofar as internet governance is concerned. So this would be my initial comments uh, with respect to uh, the subject of um, uh, internet fragmentation. And I must say that uh, especially for global South countries, there's a scramble uh, to implement various technologies, whether satellite related, whether fiber optic cable, uh, which uh, if we don't pay, uh, if we don't pay attention to important internet uh, architecture uh, development principles, it's likely to result in a lot of internet fragmentation. So I'll stop at that and return the floor back to you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Thank you so much for your very comprehensive and interesting uh, speech. And uh, I believe that uh, the Global South perspective is key uh, when we are speaking about uh, fragmentation, uh, exactly uh, to avoid uh, situations when uh, uh, fragmentation may be a result of uh, the lack of uh, technologies and uh, critical infrastructure uh, in the countries of the Global South. And that's why uh, we need international cooperation uh, to uh, ensure that uh, all countries and all regions have the same level of technological uh, equipment. And um, I believe that uh, we will continue with the Global South perspective now. And uh, Roberto, please, uh, we are now moving to the LAC region. Uh, can you share the perspective uh, of the technical community and civil society of the LAC region and uh, tell us your insights? Thank you. Thank you very much, Roman. And also I want to say hello to everyone in this panel and attending the session and in the distance to Barack, a very close friend as well. Well, I would like to um, maybe review a little bit of, of the history of internet that m m many of us will know. And if we remember back in the, uh, well, at the end of the 60s, uh, the first and more impo most important motivation was to get together everyone. I mean, in that moment, 
mm, what I'm calling about everyone was the scientific and academic community. So nobody was thinking about security, nobody was thinking about sovereignty. No, the, ide the idea was to actually try to everyone get connected to this network that was starting to grow. Uh, it reaches it reaches uh, it reaches some other places in Europe and Asia and well as we all know this big network when networks that started to be called as internet then tried to connect everyone and then in the 90s that's another fact that we have to remember is that when the private companies of course started to put this kind of services not only for the scientific community but for the citizens as a whole in all our nations. Once again, it was important to get everyone connected. Uh, I will say that the people wanted to be connected. The people wanted to have these services that we had, like email, uh, accessing to information, etc. So suddenly, many, many <coughs> people started to join to this network. We are talking about not tens of thousands, but maybe hundreds of thousands and millions. And uh, something that uh, increased this growth was uh, the invention of the HTTP, the protocol that allows to navigate in internet. But then, of course, uh, some other um, issues started to appear as well. Security issues, uh, people that was taking advantage of this kind of infrastructure to do some bad things. And I think that's where uh, the society initially, of course, started to, to worry about these issues, and then, of course, the governments. And they deployed some sort of actions that perhaps could be uh, understood as, as various ways of fragmentation. We all know that now. And, uh, but I, I would say that those are not the, the only actions that, that uh, we could uh, witness about. I will say that um, in terms of uh, technical dimension of internet, claiming that we can have a better internet, maybe a more secure internet, and that we may actually be, uh, let's say, putting some other features to current protocols, we could actually, actually we could have some um, better way of connections, more secure connections, more efficient connections. And then we can see in this other technical dimensions that could also threat to the way internet was uh, supposed to be from the beginning, as Barack was saying, to think about what the architecture um, with the principles of the internet as we know, and as we want it to be in the future, could be threatened by this kind of new uh, initiatives. And one reason for that is that uh, if we remember as well, back in those years, at the beginning of the internet, one important uh, entity coming from this technical community was IETF, which is currently the one organization that works with this large technical community and allows, of course, to come up with very clever, very interesting, and very evolved protocols during all these years. Uh, and I could say that for from the information that I got even recently, because there are some interesting options that uh, we can find now in the booth, uh, talking about these new protocols. Um, of course, they didn't come up in a, in a community or from a community in this, in this way. Um, they, those, those new protocols might be interesting, might be good, but again, it's difficult to think about the the um, results of this these initiatives if we don't see a community behind this, a big community that can uh, have, in this case, technical decisions coming from the bottom up. So that's another thing that uh, we need to reflect on. And uh, finally, another way of fragmentation that I think, uh, 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 and particularly this affects us in the global south, is related with business models. Uh, for providing internet services, of course. So in this case, I wouldn't say if it's, if it's an action that actually any of the multi-stakeholders is doing uh, that might be actually another way of fragmentation, 
But in this case, I think it's a lack of actions, actually. A lack of actions, if independently, if this is coming from the government or from the private sector, or even from the civil society when they have to require, when they have to demand this kind of services. The problem is that this lack of action is um, preventing that many people that I will say in the global south is more than half of the population is still not connected. That's another big problem. And of course, at least for me, that's another important way of fragmentation if we're trying to analyze this all these different ways. Um, so, and finally, we were listening about uh, uh, the other approach, and I understand very well about sovereignty. I understand the position exercising the rights of, uh, of, of using its mandate. I mean, I'm talking about the different governments in different places, and in the ones particularly that, of course, in the way to maybe face some particular problems regarding security or some other uh, motivations, finally they, they decide to define laws that could be uh, understood as another way of fragmentation. Um, but, and that's something that I started to reflect on during the last year, if we consider internet as an entity, as once uh, some years ago we started to consider the world, the mother world actually, or the mother earth, better said, as an active entity, as an entity that, that we need to respect, as an entity that we need to exchange with. And if we go and analyze uh, internet as a, another complex entity in which we actually, part of our lives, we spend this the, in this kind of entity, then we also need to respect some sort of rights. And I will relate those rights with the principles that internet was design, designed from the beginning and we all need to keep them uh, also in the future. And uh, we also need to talk about internet sovereignty as well. And, and I think with that concept, I will stop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roberto. And uh, I think it's time to go back to Europe. Uh, and uh, Dr. Jo Jovanovic, uh, who also was a speaker and the previous edition of uh, this session, uh, can you please uh, uh, tell us uh, something new, maybe, uh, <laughs> what you didn't mention last time, and uh, maybe reflect on those uh, uh, interventions which we made before you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Choko. You know, it's my pleasure to be here in Kyoto to discuss these, you know, trending topics. You know, uh, when we speak about internet fragmentation, the whole idea is that internet may be split in some cyberspace segments. And, you know, uh, we see, uh, you know, and I, I will agree with common approach that, you know, when we speak about internet fragmentation, we uh, see like uh, three types of fragmentation. It's, you know, technical fragmentation, governmental fragmentation, and commercial fragmentation and um, speaking about geopolitical perspective because I can't uh, you know separate all what's happening and speaking about internet fragmentation from the geopolitical perspective uh, I would put focus on governmental uh, fragmentation because I think it's important we speak about policies about actions which uh, prevent some you know group of users and certain users of the internet to create distribute or, or access information so it's all about information and you uh, Roberto mentioned you know uh, internet sovereignty and the information sovereignty and so on and so it's uh, really important to discuss this on another hand we have uh, you know uh, technical fragmentations and uh, aspect about condition which you know uh, underlying infrastructure and some systems to fully operate uh, we saw some you know accidents in the past about it and of course uh, we see commercial uh, fragmentation speaking about business practices you know which prevent also certain users to create some you know um, uh, informations and you know to spread 
information across, you know, their own, uh, across the globe, you know, speaking about their own interests and what they think is right. So uh, when we speak about technical fragmentation, uh, there are many uh, aspects speaking about routing corruptions, for example, which is really impor important. Uh, so blocking of new GT TLDs, you know, in aspects, of uh, you know, some alternative DNS zones. This is really important speaking about DNS uh, system and who controls DNS system, you know. The, when we speak about sovereign internet, uh, which, you know, th there are examples in China, in Russia, and um, other countries so they developed, uh, uh, you know, uh, like sovereign internet. It's all about how we root our traffic inside of country. And speaking about small country, I'm from Serbia, uh, I think we have a challenge, you know, um, regarding our inter routes, uh, you know, and all what's happening right now and you know it's uh, all about how uh, we want to think in a way you know how we want to uh, secure our own infrastructure because when we speak about technical aspects we usually speak about critical infrastructure you know and it's a crucial for um, I would say sovereign internet of every state of the United Nations you know uh, after that uh, we came to some different approach speaking about you know Tor anonymization services and VPNs and so on and so on this is also part of technical fragmentation aspects uh, on the governmental side uh, there are, you know, also different points of view, and I will start. With, I, I was. I will start with filtering and blocking services with some kind of censorship. But uh, in, uh, we shouldn't say that it's censorship if uh, some governmental organizations say, "Okay, this is our right to protect interest of our citizens." You know, so that, that's a good example, you know, and we see what's uh, happening right now in uh, geopolitical perspective, you know, speaking about uh, fragmentation processes, you know, between east, west, north, south, and, you know, uh, for example, China is a good example. You, you can't, uh, you know, uh, access many western, uh, I would say all western services in China. When we speak about uh, Russia, it's uh, also about Roskomnadzor and who protects, you know, rights of uh, citizens of Russian Federation all data should be stored and so on and so this is a part of governmental aspects and you know th that's normal because when we when we speak about internet uh, I wouldn't say that there is someone who has the right to say you know uh, ownership of internet is in our hands so it's a you know uh, decentralized network that, that's how how I see you know from logical perspective you know uh, there are different aspects speaking about attacks on national networks cyber crime uh, architectural and routing challenges in, inside of every country and be between continents you know we know last year when we were in Africa we discussed you know lack of connectivity in some parts of Africa you know it's it's a less connected uh, you know, continent so that's also I I an issue you know because if you speak about fragmented you know, uh, we should, you know, uh, see some um, um, uh, some parts of world where people do not have access to the to the internet. You know, so uh, uh, after that, you know. Uh, uh, when we discussed in last years and in, in uh, different forums as well, you know, there are international frameworks, you know, uh, we should speak about common approach, how to solve some challenges. Uh, nevertheless, of, you know, what's happening right now and uh, we'll say geopolitical perspective, because, you know, if you want to achieve, uh, you know, sustainability, which I think is really important, you know, uh, we should focus on building minimum common framework, how to deal with such a challenges. Because, you know, uh, living in a 21st century, many people do not think, and they don't think that uh, such events are possible. And I would say geopolitical confrontation and, you know, uh, fragmentation and so on and so on. But I think it's uh, crucial to understand that it's uh, very important to, uh, to think how to sustain, to make this, uh, sustainable and to, to grant all people across the globe to access uh, services and you know we also have from governmental side when I said uh, accessing uh, different services many people would think about social networks about controlling information channels traffic flows and so on and so on but I think you know uh, it's a sovereign right 
of every state to control their own information flow. And in these circumstances, we should uh, think about minimum common uh, framework and how to uh, make this uh, all sustainable. Because there are different interests of um, you know, every player in this global arena, in including uh, you know, global east, uh, global west, global north, global south. You know, we should, uh, we should uh, focus on building sustainable approach. And that's my perspective. Perspective. Moving back to commercial fragmentation, this is you know a challenge. Speaking about interconnection agreements, uh, about policy interoperability, speaking about Internet of Things and emerging technologies, speaking about artificial intelligence, blockchain. There are different you know approaches and aspects and so on and so on. So blocking um, discrimin discriminatory uh, you know uh, discriminatory aspects. Uh, speaking about uh, net neutrality, what is neutrality, geo-blocking aspects, content, you know, uh, potential cyber attacks on critical infrastructure as well, because if you use some, uh, they, they would say, uh, non-secure equipment. So for example, uh, in Serbia, in a country uh, where I belong, you know, uh, we have some agreement and our government signed that uh, we will not use equipments in our critical infrastructure, which is from non-secured you know, countries. So what that means, you know, this is also part of commercial fragmentation, you know. And uh, for example, I will give uh, give uh, you know example from the United from the United Arab Emirates. They signed a contract with Huawei, speaking about 5G. You know, so speaking about commercial aspects, about infrastructure, about hardware, about I would say all what is critical infrastructure in every country. It's also part of uh, fragmentation on some I, I would say industrial level. So it's a huge discussion, you know, uh, if you want to use, for example, some Western hardware equipments and so on, do we belong in, I would say, geopolitical, you know, geopolitically to some, you know, uh, uh, aspects, I would say, and policy and so should we respect this or not? So that's always about, you know, uh, what's happening right now, speaking about NVIDIA microchips and some different um, uh, server equipments and so on and so on. So uh, I would say that, you know, we see uh, internet fragmentation processes. Uh, from my perspective, it's all started, you know, uh, 2015, you know, 2015 year, 2014, you know. But uh, now we are going deeply in, in these aspects. And we see three segments, I would say, technical, governmental, and commercial fragmentation. And uh, it's, not also, it's not only about, I would say, theoretically, how, how we see it. it it's about uh, technically, and, you know, this, uh, forum, I mean Internet Governance Forum, there is, a, as Roberto mentioned, a huge technical community and uh, in the last days we discussed uh, some techniques speaking about anonymization and so on and so on. It's also about uh, how to secure your own information channels. So we speak about uh, encryption techniques, which is really important. And you know, uh, another topic which uh, which is very important is about how to secure metadata of communication. So uh, this this also includes ISP as a providers and uh, other uh, other stakeholders in the in this process. So yeah, uh, the uh, I, I want to conclude that uh, right now I see and uh, I always mention this, uh, you know colleagues know, and uh, Dr. Chukov and uh, Mr. Glushchenko also knows this, as I always conclude, you know, uh, speech with um, what we see right now as, you know, evidence, as a, as a real thing, that uh, we see three technical and I would say technological zones, you know, we see a Western European zone, we see a Russian technological zone, we see Chinese technological zone, and it's a good example when you visit China, you, you can't use Western services, in Russia there is a strict laws, you know, all data of Russian citizens should be stored in the territory of Russian Federation. In a western part of the world, it's a huge discussion about Huawei equipments and so the non-secure equipment, ZTE, uh, Chinese initiatives, you know, we speak about 5G uh, right after, I, I would say that China won 5G battle, and right after that, you know, uh, American companies founded the 6G alliance, where they bring together all American companies in, in a uh, 
position to try to won a 6G battle. So it's all about automation, about the new emerging technologies, artificial intelligence. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a good. I always ask this, you know, who, ex who can define what is artificial intelligence exactly. And a few days ago, actually, I think on a zero day or, or first day, uh, Windsurf uh, proposed that artificial in intelligence is machine learning. So when we speak about artificial intelligence, we speak about different algorithms, techniques, machine learning, data mining, and so on and so on. So speaking about only artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, I think it's, it's useless. So we see some emerging technologies, of course, uh, machine learning, AI, blockchain, uh, different processes, but it's all about wider aspects. So uh, it's all connected with 5G, 6G, automation processes, smart city, sustainability, agenda 2030, and so on and so on. Uh, global, uh, global approach, speaking about fighting against, you know, um, against pollution, for example. China is a good example. Uh, 15 years ago, uh, you know, you see how Pe Peking, uh, Beijing was and now. So the, there are initiatives in this, how we use technologies to fight against real, real problems. And uh, I, I want to add uh, at the end, you know, uh, as a conclusion, that uh, this fragmentation processes will continue. I don't see that we are going in a direction the, of as I proposed, you know, uh, before, of minimum common frameworks, uh, you know, how to deal with such challenges. I see, uh, you know, strong direction in a way that uh, this fragmentation processes will continue, will, deep, uh, will deepen, and this is all connected with geopolitical and strategical uh, processes, which definitely started. And I, I would uh, say that this is, uh, speaking about internet technology and all aspects, it's uh, just a part of, uh, uh, you know, uh, shifting of power from, uh, you know, the West to the East. And, of course, we see some tendencies and some processes of uh, global uh, north-south cooperation because, you know, there are colleagues from Africa, the, they mentioned the challenges and so on. So, yeah, this will uh, continue. I don't see uh, that internal fragmentation uh, will, will stop. And I mean technological fragmentation and, and all. So, and I see this as a part of uh, multipolar uh, processes, so the processes of rising of multipolar world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Milos. Uh, this is indeed a very insightful uh, presentation, and uh, as we see, uh, even uh, judging by the attendance uh, of our today's audience, uh, this topic uh, is still more interesting for Global South representatives. We do not see Global North here, and uh, when Global North countries host discussions on the topic of fragmentation, they discuss completely different things. Uh, Global South representatives tend to discuss the fundamental uh, aspects of functioning of the Internet, uh, because they are still struggling to ensure uh, Internet as their basic human right. And so this is the difference uh, between approaches. Uh, and it's not only in the sphere of internet, uh, in the sphere, even in the sphere of the values, I would say. Uh, because a uh, very different uh, level of uh, development always causes such, uh, let's say, existential disputes. And uh, we are happy to continue to convey the uh, points of view of the Global South countries, even though Russian Federation is the geographical uh, North country. At the same time, after the uh, commonly known events uh, in 2014, um, when Russia uh, withdrew from the uh, so-called G8, uh, me as an expert uh, in this topic, uh, in the sphere of G8, G20 and BRICS, I believe that uh, it was the transition period of actually in a turning point of Russia to go into Global South. Uh, which is uh, quite interesting. We will see historically uh, what it will lead uh, to. Uh, the history seems to be repeating. Um, I ask my colleague. As uh, yes, yes. Uh, I ask my colleague, uh, His Excellency Vadim Glushenko, to um, uh, summarize uh, 
the discussion and share his vision and the vision of the expert community who participated in uh, stock taking of uh, GDC process conveyed by the Center for Global IT Cooperation, please. Hello. Yes, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, Roman, thank you very much for giving me the floor. And I would like firstly to thank uh, all our experts uh, that expressed their very valuable and interesting views uh, on such a hot, I would say, topic as uh, internet fragmentation. Indeed, we have been discussing uh, this uh, topic for quite some time, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The substantive discussions of internet fragmentation uh, started at uh, the IGF of 2019 uh, in Berlin. And uh, since then, uh, really, this discussion has never stopped. Well, um, uh, for me personally, I, I like the, the expression of, I don't know which expert, but uh, uh, he or her or she said that, indeed, the internet has never been unfragmented. So uh, there has been always a problem of fragmentation. And this is why the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, uh, um, just uh, decided to uh, suggest a global digital compact and one of the priorities of uh, this uh, future document of the soft law is uh, avoiding of internet fragmentation. Uh, really it's it's uh, difficult to say uh, at the moment that uh, the global digital compact uh, is uh, can do something to, to stop the fragmentation of the internet but it's uh, quite capable uh, to formulate the universal rules and principles of decentralized development of national segments of the internet. Uh, this document, uh, I hope, can launch uh, the international dialogue on the future of internet on the basis of a common vision. If it contains provisions with clear criteria for the responsible behavior of all, internet, uh, of all interested uh, actors in the digital sphere, uh, to my mind, in the most optimistic scenario, uh, the Global Digital Compact uh, should define the framework and criteria for the operation and accountability of global digital platforms, ecosystems, and metaverses. And it should also ensure that respect uh, the right of UN member states to independently determine the parameters of, of the circulation of information and content uh, within their jurisdictions. And this will greatly reduce tensions in the international discourse uh, on the principles of freedom of expression and self-expression in the digital age. It will uh, make it possible to demonopolize uh, the right and practice of individual countries and uh, IT giants uh, to censor the flow of information solely in their own interests. So uh, it was uh, sort of a quote from, um, uh, the, um, from the contribution of the uh, uh, part of Russian expert community. I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, uh, of course, I'm not uh, representing the whole uh, Russian expert community, uh, but the organizations that took part in the, in the discussion of the Global Digital Compact. And uh, I'm sure that uh, the discussion on the internet fragmentation uh, will, uh, of course, uh, continue. And uh, to my mind, uh, the name of today's session, You Snooze, You Lose, is uh, very... Um, well, uh, character, uh, very well characterizes the, the uh, um, state of the discussion uh, around internet fragmentation. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the IGF community has been doing very good uh, work in uh, this sphere, and the, um, specifically, I, I would like to thank the public network uh, on internet fragmentation for very substantive discussions and uh, very interested uh, outcomes. With this, uh, I would like to thank again uh, our today's uh, speakers and experts and uh, wishing all of you a uh, very fruitful IGF. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Vadim. And uh, to be um, time efficient and not to uh, delay uh, the, the session, uh, let us please conclude here. Uh, thank you everyone for this uh, morning uh, exchange of views. It was very, very insightful, very interesting. I believe that those uh, experts 
globally who will watch the broadcast and who were online with us and present in the audience uh, had the chance to make uh, their own conclusions about uh, some new uh, ideas our speakers presented and uh, I imagine that this is uh, certainly uh, not the last uh, discussion uh, on this uh, important topic and uh, I kindly uh, invite everyone to continue enjoying these uh, beautiful forum sessions and have a productive experience uh, for the next workshops and sessions. Thank you very much. Have a great day and uh, uh, good uh, ending of the forum. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, technical team. Thank you.